stitching it now. You already got yeah, it sweated in. Suck back. Building it up now. Let's see. That little bench furniture working all right. What are you dipping it in? 50, uh, ruby. 50 50 with water or? Yeah. yeah. Ruby. Ruby and water. That 50 50 solder or what? That's lead free. Oh, that's lead free. Yeah. Pure tin. Yeah. How do you find that to be to solder? Uh, about the same about, or? Nah. Not like the good old days. It's uh, got to be a little bit hotter. And Now this is Paul Osterlo. Osterlo from the Dorval Slate Company, Dorval Restoration, uh, and uh, he's soldering with hand irons here. What what weight are, are those hand irons? Do you have any? Uh, three and a one. So there's one. There's number two there. Can you just give me a few tips on uh, soldering with hand irons? Well, I mean, if you're soldering with hand irons, you know the seams. It's a lot easier if all your seams are nice and tight. Yeah. And uh, so those seams, those, those aren't riveted or anything. No, these are riveted. Oh, they yeah. are riveted. Yeah. Okay. Especially in your corners, you want to make sure all those pounded down. It's, okay. And, so the rivets are buried in the solder. Oh yeah. Underneath. And they suck back. Yeah. And how far are the rivets spaced? Uh, usually I do I do mine about every three inches apart. Oh yeah. Depending on okay, yeah. how how tight every, you need it yeah. to be. And uh, the hand irons. You know, obviously the lead-free solder requires a little more heat, so... Okay. Um, so this is all lead-free solder? Yeah, this is all lead-free solder. It should be pure tin. And you say you need a hotter iron for the, oh, yeah. for the oh, pure yeah. tin. Uh, because it doesn't melt as readily. No, it's smooth. It's, you know, the, the leaded solder you know, is mm -hmm. really great to work with. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's super controllable. Uh, this kind of, you know, sometimes the initial, the initial touch to get everything going is there's a lot of heat right there so you're you're saying the tin requires more heat how, how does that compare to say if you're soldering um, stainless steel versus copper uh, stainless you know stainless obviously requires a lot more heat and if you're if you're gonna give advice to somebody who's just learning uh, how to solder would you say recommend that they uh, practice in a shop absolutely uh, I mean Biggest, my biggest thing with this is getting used to would be your verticals, you know. I um, see. I mean, I, practice, you know, is, is definitely, definitely the way to go. So that way you, you learn to control your heat, you know, so, you get a better idea of how hot. So, so tell me, why don't you use, let's say, a propane iron or a uh, acetylene iron like a lot of guys use? I always use traditional, just traditional oven. I, I feel like I have better control. I don't have anything... You know, with you get that that wrist motion. It's hard to control when you have something pulling on you, you yeah. know, a hose or something. You just have that just that control. You know, you learn that groove. Yeah. So I've always used, always chosen to use traditional irons. Hmm. Again, that's preference too. I mean, yeah. I'm sure, you can get the same <clears throat> same product out of a you know a torch torch iron, but I would go with practice as well. You know?